How are you? It's a bit, it's a bit nervous, but it's, nervous. Uh, it's, designed, cameras around. it's designed a fantastic t-shirt, haven't you? I've seen. It's meant to be distracting me when I have my match, isn't it? The school playground's been transformed for the day into short tennis courts. Tim's got help from some of the Lawn Tennis Association's top coaches to get Oliver's class into shape. So what do we need to do to get a, a fantastic Henman 120 <laughs> mile an hour serve? Right, I'll try and uh, give you a few hints. Um, you, you play right-handed, don't you, Oliver? OK, so we're going to we'll get put your left foot as close up to the baseline as possible. And now it, it's important to try and, when you throw the ball up, to, to get it in the right place, you want to throw it nice and high so you can reach up and then whack it down as, as hard as you can. Here we go. Let's throw it up nice and high. Big hit. <laughs> He's hit someone as well. Now that was dangerous. <laughs> right. Stuart Miles, I hope you uh, realise what you've let yourself in for. <laughs> Good job, Josh. Right, okay, you have a go, Oliver. Now left foot up to the line, throw it up nice and high and big hit. Excellent. That's very good. Very, Perfect, very good. Can I do one? Yeah. Right, here. Your on. turn. All right, same again. 120 miles an hour? 120 miles an hour. Right, so throw it up to where yeah. you can. Throw it up nice okay. and high and a big, big hit. Like exactly that. that. Oh, okay. There we go. Not as accurate as Oliver, was Not it, really? Not quite as accurate. Now, Tim, I have to say, I've seen some footage of you as an uh, eight-year-old child. You know the footage, don't you? You know what they're talking yeah. about. It comes, uh, <laughs> comes back to haunt me every now and then. Now, it's footage of you taking part in a very similar training scheme for sure. this one. Do you think that these are particularly important? I think they are. It was, uh, I think uh, that footage was when I was about seven or eight, so uh, yeah. that was when I was first of all getting involved. And I think, uh, you know, the more kids you can start playing the game at a young age, the better, and hopefully if they can enjoy what they're doing and, you know, get interested, then hopefully they'll be able to progress. Bring up a few stars of tomorrow, That's maybe. right, yeah. Bring up, hopefully Oliver can uh, be playing at Wimbledon soon. <laughs> All right, so you've got to keep moving your feet. Once it's going to be this side, then the next time it's going to come, you've got to change round and hit backhand, OK? Here we go. Forehand. All right, start with the backhand. Forehand. Good. Forehand. Backhand, Anthony. Backhand, Owen. Good. The National School's Tennis Coaching Programme was launched in 1993 and has provided tuition for more than 25,000 children. Well, Oliver, it's been a big day. Do you think you're going to take a really serious interest in tennis as a result of this? Yeah. I like it already, but I'll enjoy it even more now I've met mm -hmm. him. You think Tim will be a big influence on your career? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> big. Wimbledon's one of the biggest sporting events in the world. Around 400,000 people attend the championships during the fortnight. And the BBC provides TV coverage for millions more in 160 different countries. Satellite dishes and miles of cables all have to be in place before the tournament begins. There are a total of 18 grass courts here at Wimbledon, and the most famous are number one court and, of course, centre court. But most of the play takes place on the outside courts, just down there. I've been invited to Wimbledon for a look at some of the things you never normally see. The interior of the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club. It's one of the most exclusive clubs in the world with only 375 members. All the famous championship trophies are on display here, including the Men's Challenge Cup and the Ladies' Challenge Trophy. I've managed to get an exclusive look at somewhere you don't normally see. Inside here is where the players sit before their big match on centre court. There's some comfy chairs there, there's some tellies up there, so, you know, if rain stops play, they can always watch Blue Peter. This is the famous walk the players take onto centre court. The memories of great matches fill the air. You can't be serious, man. You cannot be serious! 
That ball was on him. That's it. The young British fans have a young British player with whom they can identify. Oh, I say, what a remarkable shot. Yes, this is the view the BBC commentators get of the match, and um, it's a lot more cramped in here than you'd imagine. The big event at this year's Wimbledon is the opening of the brand new number one court behind me next Monday, and I've been given the chance to have a Blue Peter sneak preview inside. The futuristic circular stadium has taken four years to build. It'll house 11,000 spectators, 5,000 more than the old number one court. For two years, ground staff have carefully grown and cared for the new grass court. Ah, <sighs> you know, if I beat Tim Hemman, they might let me play here. Dream on, Stuart. Well, it's not just Stuart who's getting into training for his big match. Romana and I both have important roles to play on the day. And we too were invited to the Lawn Tennis Association's HQ at Queen's Club in London for some tuition. So I'll try and draw you a simple diagram of what the court looks like. Back to school for me Doubles to learn how to umpire a match. Sultan Ganji is one of the country's net. top umpires Service and is seen at Wimbledon every year. And so on. Now, one of the common things is, how many serves do we have in a tennis? Do you know? How many <laughs> serves do we have, Romana? Oh, um, you play tennis, don't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Three? Three. No, wrong girl. No. Try a different guess. Um, two, then, maybe. Correct. Oh. oh you have two serves oh. for the first point. OK, two <laughs> serves. Occasionally, yeah. you do get three sometimes when you have a net. If it touches a net and still goes in mm, the yeah. service box, you actually get an extra serve. OK, well, I think it's back to the books for me. Hmm. Watch what you're doing, Antoinette. You walk right into your hands. Roll. Think where you're rolling it. Good roll. Well done. Oh, come on, Richard. Bend your knees. Come on. Being a ball boy was every bit as exhausting as you'd imagine. Margaret Lindsay, who's trained boys and girls for over 20 years, really put us through our paces. All right, this exercise is so that you can roll the ball from one end of the court to the other and get the ball in the right place at the right time. Oh, Richard, you've got butter fingers there. My goodness me, come on. So you're watching the line <laughs> and you're watching the ball come towards you, OK? Now, what I want you to do is, after three, all of you shout out and put your hands up. So after three, one, two, three. Out. out. Oh, now, come on. Look, <laughs> at good now. look at that. Everyone's got a funny hand like, signal. That wasn't convincing. You've got to be positive. So you've got to be loud because you've got to scare the players that they will not argue with you. The ball was definitely out. Actually, I was saying a minute ago that this... But uh, that's not very good. You're, you're so busy talking, you're not really concentrating. Right, I'll shut up. You yes, talk, that's, I'll throw. Yes, that's better. Do I look like a proper ball boy Now, this ball is yet? to send the ball to is the player. So oh, look where, which hand has he got his racket in. Try and make it bounce about a metre away. It should land then about waist level. Right, watch this then. Yes, well done. You've really worked hard. I can see a great improvement. Margaret, I'm ready to get out on the courts now. How did you see the ball? Um, 40, 15, the ball was out. How did you see the ball? Look, I'm really, really sorry, but the ball was definitely out. 40, 15 is the score. You never use the word sorry as an umpire. <laughs> and no laughing matter. I'm so sorry. You can't say you're so sorry, otherwise they'll eat your life. Mm -hmm. Those guys are going to be angry. So you've got to remain stern and firm. Right, stern. And answer the question. Clothing in the early days of lawn tennis was very different from today. More emphasis was placed on looking fashionable than being able to move about the court properly. An 1870s Victorian lady wore an elaborate full-length frilly dress with an apron to stop it getting dirty. Underneath, a bone corset, a bustle and layers of petticoats. It's a wonder she could move at all. The Victorian gentleman in comparison was quite comfortably kitted out. He wore a long-sleeved shirt, and long trousers or knickerbockers were the order of the day. Shorts that weren't widely worn until the 1930s. Well done, my dear. Hey, well done to you, my dear. <laughs> By the turn of the century, ladies began playing in white so that no one could see them perspire. Ladies stopped playing in corsets and petticoats in the 1920s and one-piece frocks became the fashion. Today at Wimbledon, players still have to wear outfits that are mostly white, although elsewhere bright colours can be worn. 
14.15. Modern outfits like um, this are a long way from those worn 100 years ago. They're still the height of fashion and a lot easier to move about in. Blue Peter this year has been at the height of tennis fashion. More than 12,000 viewers sent in designs for Stuart to wear in his match against Tim Henman. And this was Oliver Hewitt's stunning winning entry. Oliver, hi. Right, well, it's nearly time for my big match with Tim Henman. But before that, I'm going to reveal this shirt that you've designed for me to wear. You ready for this? Yeah. OK, here goes. It's under here. There it is. Whoa. What do you think? It's brilliant. It's great, isn't it? Show you the back. That's the back. Who's that weird-looking fella? <laughs> There's me on the back as well. Yeah. I have to say, I love this as well. This great big ball at the front, that's brilliant, yes. isn't it? So you're pleased, you, is it as you thought it would be? No, it's a lot better. Brilliant, well that's excellent. I have to say, it's, I think it's going to distract him a lot. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping on. So, Tim, is the big Blue Peter challenge all part of your uh, preparation for Wimbledon? I hope so. Um, <laughs> I've seen the grass court out there, so... Uh, it's uh, obviously we're going to be playing on grass at Wimbledon, uh -huh. so I hope that's going to be good preparation. Now, when you're out there on the court today, you're, you're going to be under pressure. You're facing <laughs> Stuart Miles. It's uh, a big match. Have you put uh, much work and preparation into this? I haven't seen too many of his previous results, but... Uh, <laughs> I don't think he's had any. <laughs> and so the stage is set here at Neston Tennis Club on the Wirral for the great Blue Peter Tennis Challenge. The officials are in position. He's a rather dashing-looking ball boy. The crowd are waiting expectantly in position, and the guest of honour is 10-year-old Oliver Hewitt. That's him, in the middle. And here come the players. Yeah! It was a best-of-three sets match, and I was feeling fairly confident. Ten minutes to serve. Ready. Play. Love. At least I returned his serve. Thirty love. Come on, Stuart, get your game together. Thirty fifteen. Yes, I've won a point. Now I'm on a roll. So close, and yet so far. First game, Henman. Ah, uh, never mind. Plenty of time yet. Quiet, please. Quiet, please. Can I have some quiet, please? Thank you. Love, 15. Well, I got my serve in. Shame about the rest. Yeah. 15 all. The crowd are going wild. Another point for Miles. Come on, Stuart, you can do better. Despite my best efforts, Tim took the first set, six love. I've got a couple of big serves for you in this you game. You mean those weren't big serves? <laughs> no, they're going to get bigger. Oh, no.
Things followed the same pattern in the second set. Match point. Congratulations. Thank well you very done. much. Well played. Fantastic Thanks a lot. match. <laughs> Thank Stuart, you. what can I say? What can you say? Well, I can say, say something. I can say it was a good game. Thank it you. It was a good try. It sure was. <laughs> and Tim, we don't have a trophy for you today, but we've got something that is 100 times more valuable. It is a Blue Peter gold badge. Thank you very, very much. Yes, Thank I'm you. just going to pop it on mute. And okay. that's for putting British tennis well and truly back on the map. Thank you. It's very nice on the shirt, isn't it? I think I had to have it on uh, on court Wimbledon somewhere. I'll put it on my bag. Would you? So everyone can see it. We'll be looking out for it. <laughs> Good. Well, that's all from our Blue Peter tennis special. Yeah, a big thank you to Tim for taking the time out to join us here from his valuable training. Oh, my training. pleasure. Yeah, I think pleasure. I'm going to have a few more lessons before I'm ready for Wimbledon, yeah. don't you? Oh, well, only and one me, I'm umpiring. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll be back in the studio on Wednesday. We'll see you then. Goodbye. See you, bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Tim. Julian must have been up at the...